So many patients uh, who get uh, intensive treatment or even less intensive treatment for cancer uh, will not completely recover. And you may have heard the term the new normal, um, which is uh, now being used for long COVID very interestingly, but has been used in cancer survivors for a long time where they just don't bounce back to exactly where they were before. That's not to say that many people get through it and are very resilient and have minimal um, difficulties. They may just have a little anxiety when they go in for a doctor's visit or another test because that fear of recurrence takes time to go away. But I'm talking about the physical after effects. And um, there is a segment of the cancer population, uh, 15, 20, 25 percent that may have persistent fatigue that just doesn't go away. Uh, they're two and three years out from their cancer treatment and um, their energy level hasn't recovered. Chemo brain or cognitive changes after cancer treatment are, again, common during treatment. In fact, you know, 80, 90 percent of people say, oh, I, you know, I, it's a blur. I don't remember what happened to me. I was so exhausted and so tired. But often that's because we're giving them medicines during treatment to help with them with, with anxiety and sleep difficulties. But when it's a year or more later and they cannot do what they used to do, essentially what they tell you is that their brain just has to work harder to get to that answer, to find that word, um, to be able to multitask. And the actual studies that have been done um, with breast, with imaging uh, of the brain uh, to, to look at how it's working during a task, it shows that more areas of the brain have to be utilized to get the answer, say on a test that you're doing in a scanner. Uh, even though you get the right answer, you're working harder and that's what patients will complain of. So that's a real problem that again has been recognized and we have ways of not only assessing those patients, but also intervening with them. This can occur with endocrine therapy, chemotherapy, uh, and just even sometimes surgery if it's very, very extensive. So a lot of things may affect that kind of recovery. Then there are patients who have insomnia. And that's, again, if you're not rested, we all know that sleep is very important in terms of restoring health, anxiety, depression, uh, a number of other sequelae. So these are kind of the behavioral symptoms and problems that may persist. But we also have people who have physical limitations because of the surgery they may have had or the radiation. Um, radiation to the pelvis can cause um, in men with uh, prostate cancer can cause not only um, rectal problems, rectal irritation, but urinary problems. Uh, women who, who get radiated to the pelvis may have um, sexual difficulties, vaginal narrowing and shortening and so forth. So there are local problems from radiation. Radiation uh, to other parts of the body may also cause these issues. Surgery may cause um, edema of an arm or a leg if lymph nodes are removed or radiation is given. So these then become chronic management problems for patients in terms of physical outcomes that are difficult. And then I think the more serious uh, issue is the possibility of a second cancer. And this, again, is not appreciated, but about 20%, 15 to 20% of all the newly diagnosed cancers we see in the United States, and I'm sure it's true in other Western countries, are in people with a prior history of cancer. So we need to do surveillance and risk screening in people who have had prior cancers. Sometimes it's related to that kind of hereditary predisposition. If one has a gene that's caused the first cancer, it could predispose to a second or third cancer. But often it's due to the kind of radiation uh, or, or chemotherapy treatments. And also it, there may be other susceptibilities that some individuals have that cause them to have cancer. Uh, in the first place, so that may persist and be at risk. So they are at risk for that. They're also at risk for cardiac disease and um, diabetes and other common chronic diseases that just seem to accelerate, particularly if individuals have had weight gain after their cancer, if they're not as physically active. So all of the things that occur in people as they age may be contributing to long-term morbidities and, and shorter lifespans in some cancer survivors.